Hey, James Vega, it's me, David, here in the Beatles Corner, collecting the Beatles 101. Today I'm doing this video a little, a bit different than uh, previous videos. Um, I've been at kind of a loss as far as what to talk about, so I figured I would listen to an album, <laughs> in this case, Wings Greatest, released November 22nd, 1978, here in the States on Capitol. This is, I think this is the fight, no, yeah, I think this is the final Capitol label record, or maybe that was Back to the Egg. Anyway, one of the last ones. So, um, I'm going to listen to it right now as I, you know, clean up and straighten up around here come back and tell you a little bit about it <laughs> what I thought of it and because I have not listened to this album literally probably in over 30 years so I'm gonna give it a fresh listen so let's let's figure it out all right go on why don't you play your copy of it if you have it we can talk about it together I don't know anyway there we go there we go I listened to it I know so much time has flown by, but anyway, um, like I said, this was released November 22nd, 1978. First LP long play stereo album appearance of the following songs. Another Day, Junior's Farm, Hi, 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 and Mall of Kintyre, which I realized it was a, it's a great song. It was a big hit. But, um, I don't know, it, I never cared for the song. I do appreciate it more now, the creativity behind it. But anyway, um, the song Live and Let Die makes its first um, Capitol Records album appearance. It was on the Live and Let Die soundtrack in 73 on United Artists Records. It's also released as a single. Um, the song select, well, before I get into song selections, while I have it out, um, I was going to do a close, like a close up video, but I'll just show you what we got here. So there's the cool, um, vanity record label on there. See that? Okay. And then the inner sleeve, I'm just putting everything back together as I talk over here. Um, Record sleeve, nothing too exciting. A little picture there. And then uh, shadow, or is it the back of it, probably. Um, on this side with the song track listings. And you know, I, this is typical of 1970s issued record albums. Is that they didn't really give you a whole lot. Um, as time went on into the 80s, they just became, I mean, in the 60s, they were great. They'd give you like liner notes or you'd get like, even in the 70s, like a lyric sheet and a poster. I mean, that was the heyday, in my opinion, was in the 70s where you got like booklets and, you know, pictures, lyric books and pictures and blah, blah, blah. But by this time, it was kind of stripped down. Um, something neat on the back is the song listing running order with little facsimiles of the album covers that they came from um or just for the case the singles just um promotional pictures or maybe the pictures from the picture sleeves i don't know but anyway there you go there front cover again um all right so it's interesting we've got one two three four five six twelve songs on this album <clears throat> at admittedly at this point in Paul McCartney's solo career he could have made this a double album uh, but apparently he did not want to do that um you know he, he could have had a I mean stuff like listen to what the man said or Venus and Mars slash rock show or and Helen wheels and I mean maybe a couple of tracks like, maybe I'm amazed. I mean, that's an iconic signature song um, that he did. You know, these songs could have been included on this album. It would have made a great double album. But for whatever reason, 
you know, and it would have fulfilled maybe like an additional record in his contract with capital EMI, but he did not do that. So he got like a nice little maybe cream of the crop. Some of the mo more important songs, songs that did not appear on um, a long play album before. So, and in my opinion, I've always enjoyed the sound quality of this this album. Um, you know, for a Capitol Records USA release, <clears throat> at this by this time, even the Beatles stuff, uh, if it says mastered by Capitol and the run out groove, my opinion sounds really good. Um, I don't, they must have re-engineered stuff. I mean, it just, it's a great, to me, it's a great sounding album. So there you go. Wings Greatest from Paul McCartney. I do want to spotlight a little bit more of their solo stuff. Um, maybe their, you know, the greatest hits albums from each of the bandmates in their solo careers. Just do that. Um, this, of course, has been superseded by additional collections like All the Best, um, you know, various uh, Paul McCartney anthology collections. But it's, that's the, this is the first one, um, all analog, really nice sounding album. And it's nice to have in the old collection. So there you go. Until next time, it's me, David, coming to you from the Beatles Corner. We are collecting the Beatles 101. Until next time, I'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Thank you.